Hello, we're in the uh, 4 by 4 activity, the fourth activity in the while loops chapter of Learn to Code 1. This is a challenge and it says up at the top to choose the best loops and toggle the switches. So uh, looking up here, uh, it seems that we have one of our four total switches are toggled on, so we'll need to toggle the three remaining ones on. I'm going to run this again here just to see if the uh, configuration of the puzzle changes. Looks like it does. So this time there are two switches we need to toggle on. Two of them are already on. Let's run it one more time. And here we have all four we need to toggle on because all four are off. They don't move, they're always in the same location, but uh, whether they're on or off uh, seems to change every time the puzzle is uh, set up. So, uh, choose the best loops and toggle the switches, it says. Well, um, I think it's a good time to remind ourselves what we've learned as far as loops go. So in our last chapter we did for loops, and for loops were really good at running a certain uh, section of code some number of times where we knew the number of times we needed to run it. Uh, while loops, on the other hand, that we're working on in this chapter, are also good for running certain sections of code over and over and over again. They're a little bit more flexible in that we can uh, decide a condition which will tell us to stop iterating or stop having us run that section of code over and over and over again. So in the while loop, the block of code, the number of commands that we want to run over and over and over again will stop when we reach some condition that tells us that we want it to stop. Okay. So looking at this puzzle here, this is going to take a little bit of effort to figure out what we, what we want to do here. So let's kind of just look around at this and notice, see if we can find some repeating patterns. Now one I see right away, there seems to be this square outlining the outside of this where there are um, switches that are sort of on the corners of the squares, at least three out of the four corners of the square, and byte is on the fourth corner. Okay, and it is definitely a square because as I look at this, there are uh, one, two, three, four, uh, tiles on each side, one, two, three, four tiles here, one, two, three, four tiles over here, and one, two, three, four tiles over here. So um, there is definitely a repeating pattern, and it looks like maybe it might be a good idea to make a function that says move forward three, one, two, three, get to a switch, and toggle it if we need to. Remember, they may not always be off, they may be on, okay? So that sounds like a good idea here for at least a function that will take care of these three. We'll look at the last switch in a minute, but this idea of a function where we abstract the idea of move forward three and toggle a switch if we need to, okay? So since this is always going to be move forward three, that is probably a, 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 you know, a good candidate for a for loop. Remember, for loops are when we know exactly how many times we need to do something, uh, that's when we want to use a for loop. Okay? So let's make this function here, this function that says move, move to a switch and toggle it on if we need to. Okay? So func, uh, I'll call it move three, then toggle. Move three, then toggle. And move three, then toggle, uh, we're going to always have byte move forward three and then toggle the switch if we need to. So uh, the move forward three is just going to be in a for loop. For i in one to three, we want to just have byte move forward. Now when he's done move, moving forward three, we want him to toggle the switch, toggle the switch, but only toggle the switch if that switch needs to be toggled. So we can put this toggle switch in an if statement that says if we are is on a closed switch, if that's true, we're on a closed switch, 
then we want to toggle the switch. If it's already open, we don't want to do this code toggle switch. If it's open and we toggle it, it'll make it closed. We only want to toggle it if it's closed. Okay. So this is a nice little function here that's going to take care of um, quite a bit of the puzzle for us. Um, as long as we call move3 then toggle here, then we can turn to the right and call move3 then toggle here, then turn to the right and call move3 then toggle here, and turn to the right and so on. So let's try this. Let's, let's just make sure this works. Let's call move3 then toggle then turn to the right, and one more, move three, then toggle. We're not going to do the whole puzzle now. We're just going to make sure that our move three, then toggle function works on these first two parts of our square here. So let's run this. Okay, let's run this code now and see how these two calls of move three, then toggle will work. Here's the first. Puzzle set up. Byte moves three, one, two, three then he will have to toggle this, so he does. Then he turns right and he calls move three, then toggle again, which should take care of this last, uh, that, that last uh, switch there. We haven't made it all the way around the puzzle yet. There are going to be, let's see, at least one more call to move three, then toggle. That will take care of this row right here. And then if we turn right and call it one more time, well, we'll move one, then two onto the blue portal, and then the third will, when we pop up from the blue portal here, the third move forward will move onto this last switch and toggle it if it needs to be toggled. So uh, it looks like we need to call move three, then toggle at least in this puzzle, one, two, three, four times. So we could put that in a for loop and run it four times, separated by a turn right. But um, one thing that might suggest we want to use a while loop instead is the last time it looks a little different than the other times, than the first three times. So if you can see here, it's a very subtle difference, but the first three times when we call move three then toggle, we're going to go to the, uh, to the switch here and then we're going to turn right, okay? then uh, because we're not blocked or you know we're not uh, when we turn right we're not blocked uh, but if we go down the next one then again we can move forward and turn to the right because we won't be blocked the next one we can move for move forward three then toggle uh, and we can turn to the right and do it again because we're not blocked the last time however when we end up on this platform up here even when we turn to the right we will be blocked we will be blocked so this one is different than the other three. So that gives an indication that we can use that difference in the last, in the last time as a stopping uh, indicator for our while. Okay? So in our while loop, we could do something like, say, you know, as long as we're not blocked. So while we're not blocked, as long as we're not blocked, we want to keep calling our move three, then toggle, and turn to the right. Okay, I can get rid of these because they're not putting these in a loop. And let's just make sure that this would work here. So the first time when we start on the arrow, we're not blocked, so we can move three, then toggle, turn to the right. We'll come back up to the while loop. We're not blocked because we'll check the condition. Are we blocked? And we're not. So not blocked is true. Well, we can move three, then toggle, and turn to the right. Then we can ask, are we not blocked again? And we're not, so we can move forward three, then toggle, and turn to the right. And the next time when we call move three, then toggle, we're going to take the blue portal over here to this platform, toggle the last switch, and when we turn to the right, the next time we will be blocked, okay? So we'll end up calling this one, two, three, four times, we won't call it the fifth time because we'll be blocked at that point. So we could have put this in a for loop that said as long as we're, uh, i is from 1, 2, 3, or 4, we're going to keep calling move 3, then toggle, and turn to the right. But a while loop makes a little bit more sense here.
because this last time is a little different than the other times. The other times we were on a corner where we could turn to the right and keep going. This time we're up on the top of a platform where we cannot turn right and keep going. So this makes it a little bit clear that we're going to keep doing this sequence of commands until we can't anymore. Okay, until we're blocked and we can't do that anymore. Okay, let's try this and we'll run this by stepping through our code so you can watch the while condition here. It'll check every time if we're blocked before it goes on. So let's step through our code. Okay, it's checking are we blocked? We're not, so we can call move three then toggle. The move three happens in a for loop for i is one, two, three, and then we're on the close switch so we toggle it. We check if we're blocked again. We move three then toggle. One, two, three, and we're going to be on a closed switch so we toggle it. Come back to the while loop and we turn right and we check if we're blocked. We're not. So we call move three then toggle again. One, two, three, this time we're not on a closed switch, so we come right away and turn back to the right. We check are we blocked? No, we're not. So we can move three, then toggle again. One, two, we take the blue portal over. Uh-oh, got a little glitch here. That's okay. I can just call run my code and watch it go again. I probably was gonna do this anyway to make sure it would work with a different uh, different configuration of the puzzle. So we'll just watch it go faster here. Here we go, let's run faster. It's this one, turn to the right, move three, then toggle, turn to the right. We're not blocked, so we move three, then toggle. We're not blocked, so we move three, then toggle. This time after we turn right, we are blocked. So we can't move uh, forward anymore, okay? All right, good example uh, in this of com combining two different kinds of loops, a while loop here, and we chose a while loop because we had a clear condition on when we want to stop or how long we want to keep going. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we you know, wanted to go three times. This would work on a puzzle where we had to turn right you know, 16 times, where the 17th time we were blocked. So uh, this is a little bit more general than had we used a, a, a for loop here. So it says as long as we're not blocked, we're going to keep calling uh, moving three, then toggling and turning right. And in our move three, then toggle, well, here we know that we were always going to move forward three, three tiles before we checked if we're on a switch. So that's a good, a good candidate for using a for loop here. Okay? If you have any questions or if you have a different way you solved that puzzle, be sure to share it in the comments. We'll see you next time.